With Andre Carpathy taking a well-deserved sabbatical from work as head of AI at Tesla, I thought it might be a good time to consider what still remains to get Tesla to the sought-after L4 level of autonomy. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I want to point out that I am not an employee, nor do I know anything about the internal builds or status of Tesla's FSD. And prior to filming this, I also spoke to a bunch of my Patreon patrons on Discord, none of whom are in Tesla's FSD program either. So all of this is just pure speculation on our part. It's from the outside, not the inside. So of course, take all of this with a grain of salt. So what I and my Patreon patrons discussed is the current status of where full self-driving beta is right now and what's left to get it to level four autonomy. And real quick, the title of this video is going to have Operation Vacation in it. That's something that Andre Carpathy, head of Tesla's AI and his team have talked about kind of half jokingly. Basically what they wanna do is train their computers well enough that they can functionally work without anybody overseeing them, collect data, label data, and improve the neural networks. You know, obviously that's never gonna happen completely, but it did seem kind of appropriate since Andre is taking his first major vacation in five years since working at Tesla. So anyway, good fortune to Andre. I hope he has a wonderful time. It sounds like he's gonna be doing an awful lot of really cool stuff like coding and traveling in Europe and Asia and everything. So safe travels, have a wonderful time, and definitely rest and recuperate. All of us need you on the team when you get back again at full force. So anyway, enjoy your trip. And one little tidbit for us users that seems to have come out of this trip already is that Dr. Carpathy seems to have more time to do a little bit of tweeting on the side, which is very cool. He's filling us in on some of the stuff that he's doing. Hopefully that will continue. And one of the really cool things was he mentioned something about he's going to miss using Dojo when he's doing coding on his own, which was a really interesting little insight into Tesla is that they may have Dojo working in some fashion already. Of course, if you don't know what Dojo is, definitely check out the videos that I've done on that already. But basically, as it's a supercompute cluster with all new hardware and everything, it doesn't have to be running at 100% capacity to be able to be used. So it seemed quite reasonable that they would have things in place and be able to use Dojo as it sort of expanded into its 100% capacity phase. So it's not surprising that they're able to use Dojo at this point, but it is a very cool kind of data point for those of us on the outside who haven't heard much about it since AI Day back in August. And by the way, if you're interested in that, definitely check out my videos on Tesla's AI Day presentation. All right, so let's start with a definition of what level four autonomy is. And if you want a much more in-depth video, definitely check out the one that I've already done that discusses all five of the levels. Basically, level four autonomy means that within certain parameters, the cars will be able to drive themselves. Basically, the difference between it and level five is that level five means in every conceivable circumstance that a person could drive the car, that the car would be able to drive itself and you wouldn't need a steering wheel or gas pedals or accelerator pedals, I guess, or anything like that, right? Essentially, you just have an internal space that was just for passengers. There'd be no driver facilities or anything like that. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about level four, which means that under most circumstances in most places, minus maybe really bad weather, minus maybe like dirt roads in the middle of nowhere, et cetera, et cetera, that the car will be able to drive autonomously with no human interventions. And at this point, I'm only going to discuss the US and Canada. And by the way, congratulations to Canadian drivers who are now getting FSD beta. I see your videos popping up very quickly. It seems like things are working well, so that's really awesome. Anyway, other places obviously will follow on, like Europe in particular will happen relatively soon after this you know, takes place in the United States and Canada. However, places that have insane traffic like India and other places like that will probably be quite a while until we get to that after we solve full self-driving in the US first and then Canada and then likely Europe and then maybe China, who knows? Who knows what the exact rollout will be? But I expect places that have really, really snarly traffic. I, I was likening it to like getting a PhD in driving, right? You just have to have like a bachelor's degree in driving to drive in the United States or Europe and you need a freaking PhD to be able to drive in India. I certainly as a human would never try to drive in India. 
All right, so given all of those caveats, where are we now with the beta? Currently, the full self-driving beta can drive under most circumstances, under most traffic conditions that are found in the United States, and it can navigate and get to where it needs to go without needing interventions. Now, I do, as I say, I do convenience interventions a lot, which is that I'm like, oh, the car's not acting assertive enough or something, and I'll take over and I'll you know, get it into another lane or perhaps accelerate faster or something like that. But those aren't necessary interventions. The emergency intervention that I used to have to do, you know, to keep the car from hurting itself or myself or something like that, uh, used to happen a lot more frequently six months ago when I got the first version of the beta, which was 10.3, than they do now. Now it's very, very rare that I have to intervene in what I consider an emergency type of situations. So that's the big picture of where we are right now. So what remains to be done? Well, I'm going to break this into software and hardware. Software, we need more confidence in intersections, as I was saying, and generally speaking, more assertiveness. In other words, the car needs to drive with a little bit more authority. A lot of times, like it comes out of a stop sign and has to make an unprotected left out of my neighborhood and the thing kind of creeps and creeps and creeps and then pulls out right. It needs to, I guess, behave a little bit more like a human being does in terms of like it gets up there and it's like, I'm going, and, you know, and it pulls out and it goes. So it needs a bit more assertiveness on that front. It also could use a little bit of smoothing, although it's gotten much, much, much smoother. And what I mean by that is kind of the polygonal turning thing where it goes out and then it turns and it goes up and then it turns and it goes up and then it turns right. So you get this kind of like jerk, 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 jerk as it turns. That again used to be much more prevalent. It's still there a little bit, but not nearly as much. So those, I guess, kind of fall under the umbrella of general driving behaviors and a little bit more confidence and a little more human-like driving. The next thing I've noticed in particular is the car doesn't behave properly in bad weather you know, conditions. I, I don't get to experience snow a lot, although when I went up to Springfield, Virginia to visit my parents recently, it did snow there. So I noticed that the full self-driving was a little hesitant about going like, am I going to commit to being full self-driving or not? Here we get a lot of rain. If it rains heavily, it will back off and say it's not going to do the full self-driving. It'll still lane keep, it just won't do the navigation and the lane changing and all of that kind of stuff. And I assume the same thing would happen with like dust storms and stuff like that. It does very well at ends of days when like the light is shining straight into the camera and everything. It does, it does particularly well with that, so I find that pretty cool. But bad weather, it definitely still needs improvement. Next, as one of my Patreon patrons pointed out very, very definitely, it needs to detect road debris and potholes on the road much, much better than it does. So for example, if you're driving up on a really big pothole or something like that, the car is just going to keep on driving and it won't really get out of the way. At least in my experience, it doesn't. And so I usually take over because I'm like, oh, geez, I don't want the, you know, the tire driving right over that and, you know, making the bumps and potentially damaging the car slightly or something. So I'll generally take over then, but it definitely needs to do better with that. And recently I was driving on the highway and I know this is absolutely crazy. And I was in the left-hand lane, but in the right-hand lane, there was a ladder, like it fell off of a truck, obviously, or something. And it was just sitting right there. It was at night, very difficult to see it. And I don't think that the car detected it. Again, I was in the other lane, so I don't know. But that would be a situation where if the car didn't detect it and it was driving in full self-driving mode and I wasn't paying attention or something like that, or again, if it was level four where the car was responsible for the driving, it could have hit that ladder, which would have caused you know immense damage to the car at 70 miles an hour. So again, in general, this kind of falls under the umbrella of more edge cases. It needs to detect them, it needs to collect them, it needs to label them, it needs to train on them, and it needs to deploy the new model for that. And of course, how fast we get to level four autonomy is dependent on this more than anything else. That collection of edge cases and the ability to label and then train the neural network on all of these edge cases to keep getting it better and better at all of this, you know, we're at 99% right now, right? To get up to that 99.999999% or something where it's way, 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 way safer than a human being and doesn't have issues with failures is really important to getting to level four autonomy. Next up, we have better longer term planning. And what I mean by that is not like hours away or something like that, but you know, 20 or 30 seconds or something. I think that this probably needs better communication between the navigation and the full self-driving systems. And what I mean by that is at least as far as I understand it, the navigation system is 
you know, you could sort of think about it as on your phone. It's like it's a whole separate system. So right, if you have Apple Maps or something on your phone and then Apple Maps had to communicate with the full self-driving system and say like, hey, you need to get into the right lane and make a turn or something. That sort of communication doesn't seem to be particularly great at this point. One of my Patreon patrons who understands this way better than I did said that the CAN or controller area network can get choked, that, that so much data ends up coming in from the other things, not just the navigation system, but also like the wheels and the steering wheel and things like that. Like all of these signals can get choked in the controller area network part of everything and not communicate fast enough with the full self-driving computer. So we can have things all the way from navigation systems not communicating fast enough that it needs to get into another lane in the next half a mile or something like that down to delays in signal processing can cause, you know, delays on the order of seconds to multiple seconds, causing the car to drive in a little bit more of a last minute sort of mode than it should. So again, longer term planning, I think, is another thing that's very important to make sure that all of this works in level four so that we're not in a situation where the car has to suddenly get into another lane at the last possible second. Or alternatively, when it's on the highway and cars are merging in, and you can see this happening, right? As a human being, you're like, oh, here comes people merging into the slow lane. I better move over over to make sure that we don't have a snarl up, right? So the car doesn't do that at this point. And I know that that's on the old stack at this point, but anyway, hopefully with the new stack, it will do that. But this is the kind of long-term planning I'm talking about is like 10 or 20 seconds, not minutes or hours away, but it definitely needs to do better with that. A quick addendum here, as I was going to start editing this video, I realized I forgot a very important caveat in the software category, which is being able to go in reverse. Obviously, until the car can go in reverse, it can never reach true level four autonomy because it can't back up out of your driveway, it can't back up out of a parking space, it can't go backwards if it gets stuck in a certain situation where it needs to back up. So obviously we need reverse as well. And then finally on the software end of things, it needs to handle emergency situations gracefully. It needs to fail gracefully. In other words, it needs to get off the road safely in bad situations. That could be really bad weather that's just beyond its capability, hardware failure, general confusion about what it's doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in those kinds of situations, the car needs to have some sort of protocol to get off the road and to handle these issues without causing, you know, not don't just stop in the middle of the road. That's not something that you can handle because that's a situation that you cause a whole bunch of problems with other drivers. So that's the last part I'll say on the software end of things, even though that tails into hardware because it has to deal with hardware failures. And that brings us to hardware. Do we need new hardware? We definitely do not need LiDAR or radar. Tesla has already proven that the cars drive amazingly well just using vision. As for upgrades to the current hardware, that's a little bit tough to say, but clearly hardware three is being pushed to its limits right now. And I sort of feel like if the chip shortage hadn't occurred and COVID and all of that stuff, I feel like it's probably fairly likely that hardware four would be out by now and that we would have some sort of retrofit option that Tesla would either sell to us or potentially give to us. I have a feeling they'd sell it to us for $1,500 or something like that. But anyway, that's an alternative history. At this point, we do not have access to hardware four. Uh, Elon Musk has talked about the Cybertruck being potentially the first vehicle to have hardware for in it as the full self-driving hardware that would put it at the end of this current year of 2022. To circle back on places like India that have really, really intense traffic, I do feel it's going to require the next generation hardware to solve full self-driving in places like India where traffic is so much more chaotic than it is in the United States. One of my Patreon patrons also suggested side-facing cameras at the front bumpers. If you don't know, there are two cameras towards the front, but they're facing backwards, and then there's two pillar cameras that are essentially, you know, where you are as the driver. It would be very, very helpful to have those bumper cameras because as the car pulls into an intersection or is about to pull into an intersection, it would be able to see further away. I don't know. This would require an complete rewrite of the entire neural network stack and everything to add hardware like that because you would go from eight cameras that it's stitching together to 10 cameras. So that would be a pretty major ask, but there would be big advantages to it under the circumstances of trying to pull into lanes of traffic where you can't really see particularly well without sticking your nose out a little ways. But to replace hardware three with hardware four, the box itself that does the full self-driving should be a fairly easy thing to do. It should be a drop-in replacement. It's just kind of a 
box that you could pull out the one motherboard, you could put the other one in and hopefully everything would just work. You know, I would assume that Tesla would build it that way so that you could do a drop-in replacement with the old stuff. So how fast can we get to level four autonomy? Well, software is easy and I don't mean it is easy, but what I mean is it can happen very, very quickly. Hardware requires refitting the entire fleet of cars. And so that would be a much longer term proposition. So in my opinion, if hardware three is adequate to do full self-driving and we don't need hardware four, then I really do still think that we were talking about the end of 2022 to be able to have level four autonomy, not that it's going to be approved by the government or anything like that, but that it will be technically capable of level four autonomy. And there will be data to support that it's actually significantly safer than regular human drivers. If on the other hand, we're actually gonna need hardware for to do this, then we're talking about several years because they'll have to make hardware for, they'll have to deploy it at massive scale, and then they'll have to replace it through the fleet and then allow people to upgrade to be able to do full self-driving at level four. As far as I'm concerned, I think they're going to be able to do it with hardware three. So again, my prediction is by the end of 2022, we'll have effectively level four autonomy, and it'll just be a question of the government catching up. Before we get to level five autonomy, I'm pretty darn sure that we're going to need hardware four, but we don't really need level five. Level five really isn't that important of a goalpost to get to. Level four, like if you just take like all of the New York City five boroughs or something like that, that would be a geofenced area. But if the car could just drive under almost all circumstances in that area without needing human intervention, it doesn't really matter if it can drive on a dirt road in the dark with a snowstorm in the backwoods of New York, right? Upstate New York. If, if it can do the kinds of things it needs to in New York City, that's gonna take care of the, the problems that 99 point something percent of people are going to have. And even people who need to drive it, you know, in the backwoods of Minnesota in a snowstorm on a dirt road or something, they'll just have to take over at that point. The car will be able to do it by itself most of the other circumstances. So again, L4 is the really important benchmark to get to. L5 is, is not all that important. So anyway, again, we're talking about nine months from now. So that's a really, really soon thing. And I, you know, I will be proven wrong. You guys can check back by like a year from now, if it's March of 2023 and we still haven't even gotten close to level four, you can laugh at me, but I think I'm gonna be right. All right, so these are my thoughts and some friends of mine on Discord and discussing all of this. What do you think? Did we miss something? Is something important missing from the list of things that need to happen before we get to level four autonomy? And of course, what do you think about the timing of all this? Do you think it's gonna happen by the end of the year or do you think I'm being way, way, way too optimistic here? Definitely let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video and found it fun and thought provoking, please do like it because that's how YouTube knows that other people should watch this video and also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate the conversation that we had that led to this video. And of course, I'm really looking forward to meeting a bunch of you in Austin next week. Wow, that's coming up really, really soon. If you want to join the team, definitely check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, Success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.